Named from the Roman god of waters, Neptune is an exciting planet. Now holding the title of the farthest known solar system planet, the bright blue world looks like something crafted from Earth's great blue semi-ocean covered surface. After all, astronomical observers gave Neptune the name of the Roman god of water, specifically oceans. The planet is beautifully colored, but ironically wasn't even discovered by sight. So before getting to what we've recently found on Neptune, let's take a look back at the discovery of Neptune. Oddly enough, that takes us back to late September 1846. While historians had long rumored that major astronomy players such as Galileo, Jerome Lalande, and John Herschel had seen the planet up to 233 years before its confirmation, many have credited them with observing Neptune as a fixed star. However, while right about the existence of Neptune, it wasn't a star. Instead, as proven in the Berlin Observatory during September 23rd or 24th of 1846, Neptune was a planet. Spotted by Johann Gottfried Gaillet off the calculations of famed French astronomer and mathematician Urban Jean-Joseph Le Verrier, Neptune turned out to be yet another massive planet in the distance. Neptune is the only planet in our solar system not visible to the naked eye, meaning that all discoveries and hypotheses had to prove themselves through powerful telescopes, which happened to rest within the New Berlin Observatory. Ironically, Le Verrier had hypothesized Neptune's precise orbit, following its gravitational pull on nearby Uranus. Using celestial mechanics and detailed studies, Le Verrier pinpointed Neptune with nothing but calculations and charts. Nonetheless, recent discoveries have been with slightly more advanced tools than early 19th century telescopes. As a matter of fact, direct exploration has only involved one single device, Voyager 2. Launched August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 was a critical mission for more than just Neptune. The spacecraft's primary mission was to visit Jupiter and Saturn, Saturn's rings, and the largest moons between the two planets. As such, scientists designed Voyager 2 to complete that objective, with an estimated build lifetime of just five years. However, the craft lasted longer than expected, and NASA scientists decided to send it to Uranus and Neptune. Ten years following its launch, Voyager 2 enacted a mid-course correction, finally adjusting to move closer to Neptune. By August 25, 1989, Voyager 2 had its closest approach to Neptune, flying just 4,800 kilometers above the planet. While many don't recall much about Voyager 2's presence near Neptune, the spacecraft discovered quite a bit about the planet. That's even with Voyager's materials consisting of 1970s technology, designs, and it being the first artificial object to reach the planet. Nonetheless, Voyager 2's first images translated a much different planet than what scientists' imaginations held. Bright blues, planetary rings, dark spots, moons. They were immediate breathtakers for the team at NASA. Even in 2021, over 30 years later, Voyager 2 remains the only probe that has been able to observe Neptune from a close distance. Sure, we've had minor views from probes like New Horizons zip by the Blue Planet, although it hasn't gathered the same amount of information as Voyager 2 has. Even still, Voyager 2 still has had more than a few discoveries of its own. So let's start with the first one listed just a moment ago, Neptune being blue. Obviously, Neptune is a blue planet, however it's best known for its bright and incredibly saturated body, which resembles a vivid blue. While it's pretty apparent to us now, that wasn't too much of a standard connection to past astronomers. Sure, they knew that Neptune was blue, especially having initially thought it to be a fixed blue star, but nobody expected what Voyager 2 found. That would be a hydrogen-rich atmosphere, filled with more than enough methane to turn Neptune blue to the eye. Voyager 2 discovered that Neptune held up to 100 times its poles methane, ethane, and ethene within just its equator. Ironically, there's only a hint of methane, which happens to give Neptune its signature look. We don't know precisely how the planet's so blue, especially with only a touch of methane, meaning that one of its other atmospheric elements is behind Neptune's vivid blues. Whatever's causing it, it likely lies within Neptune's strong winds. With 1,100 to 2,600 km per hour winds, Neptune's surface is constantly in a state of unrest, with supersonic winds faster than any other winds in our solar system. These winds, at their lowest, are just under three times the fastest wind ever recorded on Earth, at 371 km per hour. 
According to data from Voyager 2, it's likely thanks to Neptune's frigid temperatures and low surface friction. After all, Neptune reflects over 2.6 times the energy it receives from the Sun. Alongside this little fact, Voyager 2 discovered that Neptune's not alone in being quite frigid. The planet's largest moon, Triton, is the coldest known planetary body in the entire solar system. The moon is home to nitrogen ice volcanoes, orbits in the opposite direction of Neptune's rotation, and is believed that in 3.6 billion years, it will fall into Neptune's gravity well, be torn apart, and form a new ring system around Neptune. However, we're not talking about discoveries outside of Neptune, we're talking about findings on Neptune. And what would be more interesting than the planet's lesser dark spot, great dark spot, and scooter? The lesser dark spot, or the small dark spot, was a vortex and Neptune's second largest cyclonic storm on the planet's surface. That's correct, was. While the second largest storm was discovered in 1989 by Voyager 2, it had completely and utterly disappeared by 1994. Strangely, the Great Dark Spot had a similar fate. This anticyclonic storm was spotted in 1989 by Voyager 2, home to a cloud-free regenerative interior. The Great Dark Spot had disappeared entirely by 1994 when the Hubble Space Telescope found no signs of the lesser or Great Dark Spots. However, it had reappeared by 2016, nearly identical to its 27-year-old predecessor. Even more strangely, NASA scientists discovered a new central dark spot, and a smaller spot in 2018. However, images found its rotation had begun to reverse, where the spots would slowly start to disappear under Neptune's strange atmosphere. Another spot began to grow, leading scientists to believe that this was a cycle that has been and will continue to repeat for hundreds, if not thousands of years. The oddest part about all of this was that Neptune wasn't able to support weather systems. Well, at least, that's what scientists had thought. NASA had assumed Neptune to be too cold to support weather, a sturdy atmosphere, or really anything. However, Voyager 2 completely obliterated that theory with the Great and Lesser Dark Spots, their successors, and the group after that. Additionally, Voyager 2 and infrared studies showed the presence of an internal heat source. This heat source and weather systems were thought to have been impossible with Neptune's distance from the Sun. Although, there they are. Interestingly, Neptune not only fosters a small internal core, but also has frigid temperatures allowing wind speeds up to 2,500 kilometers per hour, and storms rivaling a small-scale great red spot. Hosting a hydrogen and methane atmosphere, nearly devoid of helium, Neptune is just weird all around. Oh, wait, we're also ignoring the fact that literal diamonds rain from Neptune's atmosphere and the planet's mass consists 80% or more of water, methane, and ammonia. So even though Neptune and its nearby counterparts Uranus are considered gas giants, they're also called ice giants. That's because the 80-20 split of ice and gas makes Neptune an incredibly unique discovery. Well, if you couldn't tell already from the incredible wind speeds, frigid temperatures, ice volcano moons, massive storms, rocky core, diamond rain, and somewhat refined atmosphere, However, even with all of this quite unbelievable information we've discovered on Neptune, we still haven't even scratched the surface. This is because NASA has been the only agency to deliver a probe to Neptune, and it wasn't their original plan. Remember, they had wanted to study Jupiter and Saturn, with an extension to visit Uranus and Neptune. NASA had wanted to launch a Voyager 3 and 4 to investigate Neptune and beyond, but the near $1 billion price tag on each launch held them back from it. So while the Chinese government, NASA, the ESA, and other groups had future plans for Neptune visits, many have been cancelled or removed. The planet's abstract atmosphere, composition, internal core, and other oddities across Neptune are all things NASA and the world haven't seen before. Hopefully, we'll learn more about Neptune, especially considering just how much is unknown. Although, who knows? What do you all think of Neptune? China has a 2024 mission tentatively planned, although there's a significant chance that the Chinese government will cancel it similar to Voyager 3 and 4. Nonetheless, do you think there will be a race to visit Neptune? While it's still a gas giant, there might be just enough ice for a surface visit. Either way, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure to check back for more space videos like this one every week.